I keep getting recommended this on Facebook Marketplace. Are they trying to tell me something? In 1969, CBS had a TV show on their channel called The Archie Show by Filmation about the characters of the Archie comics forming a rock band. It was so successful that the show even had a number one hit on the charts. Now, what does this have to do with Scooby-Doo, you ask? Hold up, hold up, just stay with me, all right? CBS wanted to double down on that successful idea and asked Hanna-Barbera to make a similar show, only this time the rock band solves mysteries. Joe Ruby and Ken Spears would come up with The Mysteries 5, a show with a large sheepdog character that was a beatnik that played the bongos. That was fucking stupid, so they made Scooby-Doo instead. Scooby-Doo is one of those cartoons that refuses to die. It's as if it's always been around since the dawn of time. Other than a brief disappearance in the 90s, there has almost always been new episodes of Scooby-Doo in some form or another. And in the 2000s, we saw a huge revival in the series in the forms of movies, straight-to-video movies, reboots, and video games. Even though there were several games in the early 2000s, there were games before then. Games like... Mattel Electronics presents... Okay, it doesn't do that. Here's what it really sounds like. Well, that's five years worth of wax that just melted out of my ear canals. Okay, where do I begin? You see that puke green blob right there? That's supposed to be Scooby. And these are ghosts. Now, if Pac-Man has taught us anything, it's to avoid the ghosts, right? No! You touch the ghosts to win! Not only is that the polar opposite of Pac-Man, it's even in a maze, but this is the polar opposite of what Scooby would do in this situation. Unless he's doped up on whatever's in those Scooby snacks. And what kind of crazy person runs around touching ghosts anyway? Much less a dog. This game is simple. You move around, you touch ghosts, and you avoid a skull head that will chase you if he sees you. You can make him stop by laying a bone in the maze, and that's the whole game. Now, would you believe that this game will only work on a reel in television if you have the extremely rare ECS keyboard attachment? Yes, you heard me. This game requires a keyboard. Was there not enough buttons on the Intellivision keypad? Well, we can rule out this one getting re-released least on the Intellivision Amico. How is that coming, by the way? Now, unfortunately, there was no NES Scooby-Doo. The series skipped it entirely. However, there were home computer releases, like Scooby-Doo on the Commodore 64. Hell yeah, we about to hear some sick banging Keychin remix of the Scooby-Doo theme? <laughs> Oh, that's not good, actually. Come on, man. I want to hear some nasty sizzling C64 sound chip goodness. You know what? I'll do it myself. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I don't claim to know everything about the show, but I'm pretty sure Scooby isn't yellow. Unless it's an episode I ain't seen. And Scooby grew some fucking balls in this game because he's punching ghosts in the face. Yeah, buddy. It's not even that much of a punch. It's more like he's waving his fist up and down. You know how a lot of these home computer games are unbeatable because the game devs didn't really give a shit? I think this is one of those. Because for one thing, they put way too many enemies in here and you die in one hit. And if there's an enemy close to you, you can't run away from it because it walks just as fast as you. See, I'm fucking screwed right here. If I turn around, I die. And that's pretty much all you do in the game. Punch, ghosts, get trapped, and die. What you're supposed to do is find one of the other characters then you go to the next stage but good luck finding them without infinite lives this is captain claw levels of unmerciful what are these enemies supposed to be is that adolf hitler's head on a jack-in-a-box in a flower pot i want to see the scooby-doo episode he's from and what is that what is that <laughs> What is that supposed to be? It looks like a blow-up doll of a cheap chomp that got deflated. Uh, I think I've had enough of this game for a lifetime. There was another home computer game called Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. And just to change things up, we're gonna play it on the Atari ST. Uh, 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 that's what I'm talking about. I think we in for some sick beats, boys. 
So this one's more of a 2D platformer like you would expect on the NES or something like that. And as far as I know, this is the only game you can play as Scrappy on, which is amazing. I wish they would have put this on NES or something. I would have killed to play a Scrappy-Doo game. Man, my childhood nostalgia is just flaring up so much seeing this. And you know what? What? Why are you looking at me like that? What, you don't like Scrappy? You don't think Scrappy's cool? I love Scrappy. He's awesome. I, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Shit. Don't like Scrappy. What the fuck? Well, love him or hate him, this game doesn't seem to be all that bad. What I don't like is there's no visual cue of any kind that you've taken damage. You just take damage. And I don't think there's post-hit invincibility either. You attack your enemies with a boxing glove, and I think you can jump on some enemies' heads, but it doesn't really tell you which ones you can. Maybe it says in the manual, but of course I don't have that. I would like a sound effect, some flashing, some knockback, something to tell me I'm losing hell. But no, there's no sound effects at all, just this sick chiptune music. Which I'm not gonna lie, sounds pretty damn good. I kind of wonder if the Amiga version sounds better because there was one. Let's check it out. Oh, fuck, I could listen to that all day, shit. I found this pogo stick in one level. I think it makes you jump higher, but other than that, it doesn't really help at all. In fact, it makes it to where you can't use your boxing gloves, so it's kind of like shit. I notice sometimes when you die in a place that has a lot of platforms, especially moving ones, it'll knock you back pretty damn far. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, shit, what's this level? Scrappy-Doo goes to hell? And then he Chris Redfield's a fucking boulder. Oh, who's this supposed to be? Is that Joe or Mac? You know, they show Scooby on the map and they show Scooby on the HUD, but I never actually see him in the game. How do you have a Scooby game without Scooby? But we sure got plenty of googly-eyed frogs and whatever the hell this is. Oh, wait, it's supposed to be a mammoth. I see now. You know what I thought it was? I thought the white part was a mouth and it was a big face going, oh! You know what? I keep making fun of this game, but it's actually pretty solid. I'm actually surprised an Atari ST game would be this good. You know, it's still bothering me y'all don't like Scrappy. I think it's just y'all don't understand what he's been through in life. Scooby's sibling threw him away to live with him because he was unwanted. And then through his life, he conquered the Arctic Circle, escaped hell, and defeated a tribe of missing nose in a haunted forest. Yeah, the game glitched out on me and wouldn't play anymore after this. Oh, well, next... Scooby-Doo on the Super Nintendo. Oh boy, I have got a love-hate relationship with this one. It's got a lot of things it does right. Like the music is the background music from Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And most of the sprites of Scooby and the gang are traced from animations on the show. Like when Shaggy and Scooby walk, it's the same animation. It has the look and the sound, but how about the gameplay? How about... It's not your normal platformer. It's more of a glorified scavenger hunt. You wander around the map searching for clues like a blind man in a snake pit trying to eat spaghetti. You give the clues to Velma to unlock more areas in the level. Now, here's problem number one with that. Some of these clues are hidden, and to find them, you have to hold the X button to have Scooby sniff the area you're walking on to find something. This means that you have to go around sniffing every corner of the map to find hidden items, and Shaggy walks slower when you're sniffing. This can become a problem when you're in a place that has enemies in it. You see that? That's a scare meter. You fill that shit up and Scooby and Shaggy start having Vietnam flashbacks and you lose a life. There's no visual or audible feedback from you touching an enemy other than the gauge going up. There's no temporary invincibility or anything. You can literally just brush by an enemy and fill up half your damn gauge. It's aggravating. So how do you get it back down? You eat Scooby Crack, which Daphne gives you every time you unlock a new area. Guys, never Google Scooby-Doo Crack Pipe. You are not ready for what you will find. So do you have any way to attack, you ask? Each level gives you different weapons. Most of them are throwing weapons, but you also get a hammer and a trolley? Okay. The throwing weapons are poo-poo. If you actually hit anything with these things, it's pure luck. Oh, come on. Oh, for God's sake. Just hit the fucking check letter, my God. Piece of shit game. Oh, fuck your mother.
You see, you have to time this just freaking right. Are you serious? Oh my god, come on! There! Fuck! But the main thing I hate about this game is that it's glitchy. Every time I played this game as a kid, I would find some kind of game-breaking glitch that would have to make me reset. In fact, I had one on this playthrough. At the end of the level, you had to find the items needed to make a trap, and then you lure the enemy into it. So I found the monster, and now it's supposed to chase me. But then I noticed it didn't follow me. The monster is stuck. And for some reason, Daphne spawned here. And also, there's a clue here that I've already got. Well, since all this monster is going to do is reverse moonwalk, I guess we got to end this review. Two out of ten. I liked this game as a kid, but not now. Scooby-Doo on the Genesis is a completely different game. It's a point-and-click game. I hate point-and-click games. Next, Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers on the Nintendo 64. Oh, this game made me want to shove my cock in a meat grinder. Oh, I don't remember this part of Resident Evil 2. That's right, we got fixed camera bang bubbles. This game follows the plot of episodes from the series. So we're outside the museum from the Black Knight episode. Is Shaggy gonna swoosh right in? No, he doesn't. That's disappointing. Not as disappointing as this fucking game, though. There is something bad wrong with the controls in this game. I don't even know how to describe it. Okay, basically, when you're walking and the game changes screens, it also changes how the control stick is set up. Like when you walk downward on the next screen, the position you have the stick on will now serve as the forward direction until you let the stick go go then it resets imagine if you had a joystick that would randomly change which way is up man you would just have to play it and i'm telling you not to it just about makes the game unplayable it really turns into a problem when the black knight is chasing you because you lose track of what is what on the control stick this is a scooby-doo game a baby game it doesn't need cryptic controls and then there's this part where you have to dodge a bunch of dinosaurs oh god i'm getting a headache just looking at this. It doesn't help that because of the fixed camera angle, you can't really make out the perspective of like how far or how close it is. And even when you can, you still have to fight the fucking controls. I mean, look at this. This is a mess. When you finally do make it to the end of this, you get to Velma and Velma says she needs you to find her glasses. So you have to get back out of this spot, go to the place where the Black Knight spawns, try to run away from him and then get to where the glasses are. Here's Here's the problem, the Black Knight runs really fast, and here you are trying to fight the controls. When I finally do to get to the glasses, the Black Knight gets over there too, and I gotta use post-hit invincibility to try to push myself away from him. But that doesn't work, so I have to like inch around this corner and try to move him in such a way that I can get behind him? But that tactic was about as reliable as a Bethesda game. This time, I pick up the glasses as soon as he spawns. That way, he's still behind me and I can run away from him. Ugh, oh, I made it. But you know what I gotta do now? Go through the dinosaurs again. Oh, for God's sake, man. To whoever made this level, I hope their dog dies in a car crash and the dog was driving. Now, I know the question you're gonna ask can you pick up velma's glasses before you meet her no they don't spawn i already tried that the fucking devs were adamant that you go through this place several times you know i'm from louisiana and then the south part of it we've got voodoo queens and witch doctors and shit i ought to commission one of them to make a scooby-doo voodoo doll that i could just steadily stick pins and needles in ah, fucking game devs ah your mama ah so you want to see the rest of this game well too bad because my emulator crashed i've never been happier that a program crashed in my life. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase on PlayStation. My God, this one was not bad, actually. I mean it, after all the junk I just played, this was like playing Crash Bandicoot or something. If you've never seen the movie Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, it's about the gang getting sucked into a video game. So, of course, there needs to be a video game, and here it is. I've spread my evil virus all over this game. Oh, this must be DeNovo and I cheat. Come on, Daphne, let's go find that trap. Good luck, everyone. 
Saving your game is always a good idea when there's a phantom virus around. I love it when games can't decide on the sample rate for their audio. So the quality keeps going back and forth. Uh, Shaggy, what are you doing there? You doing push-ups? Like, drop down and give me 20, Scoob. What's your rager malfunction? It looks like you've landed in Japan. Kawaii. <laughs> well, when I said this is like playing Crash Bandicoot, I meant it. These levels are laid out exactly the same way. Watch out for those ninjas, Scooby. They look mean. Thank you for interrupting, Daphne. Now, you have jumping and ground pounding, but you've also got pies, which... I know you're hungry, Scooby, but these pies aren't for eating. You'll want to throw them at enemies when they get in your way. Can we not do this? I did this in the Grinch episode, and it wasn't funny then. Those Scooby Snacks sure look good. Picking up more than one Scooby Snack in a row. When you come to large gaps in the... Use your jump and bounce move to open... Like you fucked up, Scoob! So you have pies that you throw at enemies. How very cartoony. And you get the pies by ground pounding on these crates that look like Game Boys that only have a directional pad. Have you ever seen the No Buttons Twitter? This is like halfway there. But yeah, you jump, you ground pound, you throw pies, you defeat bosses, and then some. And that's pretty much the whole game. Honestly, it's not that bad for a Crash Bandicoot ripoff. The levels do feel samey sometimes, but the controls ain't too bad. The game isn't challenging, but it's not too easy either. It's a, it's a solid 7 out of 10, I would say. And then the ice levels! And it all comes crumbling down like my crypto when Elon Musk makes a tweet. Guys, how do y'all feel about a level where half the fucking floor is slippery? I just want to find the person that came up with the idea of slippery floors and just choke the fucking life out of them! Oh, I'm choking my microphone. What the fuck? How long did it take to make these textures for this level, I wonder? Look at me, I'm a graphic designer. I have never wanted to kill defenseless baby seals more than after playing this game. Anybody ever watch The Secret of the Seal? That was my first anime. Go tell Mr. Nani that I- Nani that I- Nani I don't think anything. Ooh! Let me tell you about this snowmobile level, though. I guess to make it more icy, they decided to make the controls of this thing really floaty. You can hang up doing any precision turning on this. Just hold on for dear life and don't hit anything till you get to the end. You know, that's good life advice. It seems all well and good until you get to this really narrow path with bottomless pits on both sides. Because this thing is so floaty, it's really easy to overcorrect and fall off the side. Oh, well, I guess I'll get fucked then. You're already trying not to hit this penguin, so you got two things to worry about at one time. And for some reason, when you hit this ramp, it'll send you flying in a random direction. <laughs> you know what I'm doing right there? Save stating. You know what? This boss fight can fuck right off. You're on a slippery block of ice with bottomless pits all around. You only have to hit the boss three times, but it's not hitting him. It's him hitting you you gotta worry about. The game tells you when you're able to hit the boss, and you better be ready. But you're not. You're slipping, sliding around, trying to get back in control again. And then he starts doing this fucking spin attack that's almost impossible to dodge. You would have an easier time trying to dodge jizz when you're stuck between a cock and a condom. That is probably somebody's fetish I just described. I did finally beat him, but I killed many a shaggy doing so. Okay, Doom Zombie. This final boss, however, is unbeatable. I used every fucking cheat and save state in my arsenal, and I could not beat this motherfucker. It all boils down to he's too damn fast, and you're too damn slow. And by the time you get to his final form, he's just a damn aimbot. There's probably somebody out there who can beat him, but it ain't me. It kind of sucks because I kind of liked this game. But if I'm not gamer enough, I'm not gamer enough. Scooby-Doo Unmasked was one of the three multi-platform games that came out on the 6th gen. All three of them start off with a variation of the classic intro. Is that the caveman in a spaceship? I have so many questions to the point I should ask none of them. Okay, this is either the shit from Splatoon, or it's that multicolored soap car washes spray on your car. You know the one that smells really good? Don't drink car wash, by the way. The plot of this game is kind of weird. All the monsters in the game are made out of that goop you just saw in their animatronic. Man, the developers had no idea animatronics would get a stigma to them years later. All the FNAF fans watching right now is like, stigma, stigma dick in that foxy. Uh -huh. The game's a 3D platformer with a hub world and stages. 
there's only three worlds, but they all have several stages. So that means you're going to be stuck to this same theme for a while. And the first world's theme is Chinatown. And guys, I, I feel like this could be any video game. It's just a good platformer that just happens to have Scooby-Doo in it. Yes, you just heard me say good. This game is actually kind of fun. There's a good variety in the levels too. Some are extremely linear. Some of them you have to kind of explore to figure out where you're supposed to go. But there are clues hidden in all the stages and you unlock new levels when you find them. So the game gives you incentive to explore. You got a few different attacks you can do and you can unlock even more attacks by getting costumes for Scooby including this kung fu one <laughs> Well, that tactic almost worked. The best thing about the Kung Fu costume is you can do a Scooby Dookin! Scooby Dookin! Scooby Scooby all in all, this game is not bad at all. It's not perfect, but it's pretty decent. I do plan to play this some more. So it is possible for Scooby-Doo to have a good game or a decent game, but what about a great game? Like something you would actually play because you wanted to and you would recommend other people play it too. That game is called Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. This game had a lot of thought and care put into it by people who genuinely did their homework about the show. This one is all about a ghost named Mastermind, voiced by Tim fucking Curry, who revives all the old monsters from the original show, and Scooby has to defeat him and save the gang. So there's tons of fan service in this game. Even Don Knotts is in it. It's like my happy always told me. You plant crabgrass, you get crabs. Try jumping on those pesky critters. That should take care of them. This game does a lot of mixing up 2.5D and 3D playing styles, and it does it very seamlessly. Instead of having a hub world and stages, the levels are all connected together and have branching pathways. So it's almost like a freaking Scooby-Doo Metroidvania. And there's a lot of variety in these levels. They never feel samey or boring in any way. There's also a collect-a-thon element in that you need a certain amount of Scooby snacks to unlock certain levels, but it's very forgiving and you don't have to get every single solitary one. You also get items later in the game that unlock new areas and levels. And they even give you ways to fast travel so it isn't a slog trying to get back to those levels. Ah no, I need to be entertaining y'all. I need to be cracking jokes, calling Scooby's mama a bitch because she's a female dog, or asking how does the headless specter still see you if he has no head? But I can't make fun of this game. It's good. Like really good. And I'm going to play it some more after I finish this video. It's so good that it aggravates me that it got such low scores. This should be a cult classic that all of you should play. It's on P PS2, it's on GameCube, it's on Xbox, and it's cheap. There's no reason for you not to get this game. As a matter of fact, I love this game so much I bought a physical copy. You want another reason to buy this game? Okay, the boss fights have theme songs. Watch out. No, it can't be. It's the caveman. He was frozen in there and now he's out here. I genuinely want to fuck this game. Literally, I want to take my dick and put it in the CD hole and just start ramming it up and down. I hope I have gotten my point across that you need to play this game. So the sixth gen has been pretty kind to Scooby, huh? We got a decent game. We got an excellent game. <sighs> And then we got Mystery Mayhem. Uh, have you ever heard the term gag me with a spoon? Well, gag me with a fucking cactus. This game gives you a bunch of objectives to complete. Go here, pick up that, solve this puzzle, and normally at the end it asks you to defeat all the ghosts on the map. Now on the first level, you don't have a weapon until later. Then you get this book. This book is made to order. No! This book is made to stop that that book is your weapon and it sucks up ghosts and stores them in the book wow somebody either played luigi's mansion or faces of evil unlike the ghost vacuum in luigi's mansion it has a power meter and when it runs out you can't use it anymore 
and it uses more fuel than an Oldsmobile, so it's not uncommon to run out of power in the middle of sucking up a ghost. Then you either have to find these little things around the level or go back to a recharging area. Recharging your book. What is it, a Kindle? Do they still make those? There's this voice line that Shaggy keeps saying when you suck up ghosts. I thought it only says it when you've got one more ghost left to go, but no, it says this at any point in the game. One last ghost, roll me free. One last ghost, roll me free. One last ghost, roll me free. It's like Shaggy is venting his frustration with his drug addiction. A one last hit is all you'll need and you'll quit, right? Like, I can quit when I want to. You can switch between Shag and Scoob at any point, but literally the only difference is Scooby can crawl into small spaces and Shaggy can't. So there's absolutely no reason to pick Shaggy. He's only there so they can have instances where they get split up and have to find each other. Didn't the Grinch have this mechanic too? Oh god, tell me there's no poles in this game! There's a quote-unquote stealth mechanic in this game where you have a sneak mode for quietly walking around ghosts, but it doesn't work because ghosts can both see and walk through walls, so there's not really any way to hide. But the game knows this, so it gives you ghost disguises that make the ghosts not see you or hurt you. You can even touch them. There was this movie studio level where I kept getting lost and running around the same damn areas over and over trying to find my way. And the whole time, this guy in the background keeps talking to Shaggy. Okay, now look scared. Like, I am scared. Now look scared. Like, I am scared. Now look nervous. Like, I am nervous. Those audio clips must have played a hundred times while I was running around trying to find where to go. Okay, now look scared. There's no platforming in this game at all, and you can't jump, so it's just you walking around, looking for clues, solving puzzles, blah, blah, blah. Everything just felt like a grind. Now I know your question, Stu. Does anything else happen in this game? Well, there's a fucking minecart level! Oh my god! This might be the worst minecart level in video game history! Okay, here's the deal. You have to make a perfectly clean pass from one end of the section to the next without getting hit or falling down a hole. The problem is, the minecart is going way too fast and they put way too much shit in the way. I want to meet the guy who has these lightning fast reflexes who can finish this minecart level without getting hit. Someone in the comments section will tell me I have a bad memory. Well, you have a bad face. But the worst part is all the alternative routes. There's a bunch of areas where you can switch what track you're on, but only one of them is the right way. The rest are dead ends. Some of these dead ends don't tell you they are one until you've been on it for a while. That's the sadistic fucks who made this game laughing at you. No, literally, they laugh at you. Check out this shit they pulled right here. Watch this. Fuck your mother with a syphilis cock. You see what they did right here? I have to lean to the right so I don't fall in this hole, and they put a switch track right there so you would go into that dead end. This minecart level is insufferable torment, and I fucking hate it. Even after I'd finally finished it, yeah, I got past it, by the way, I felt absolutely no sense of accomplishment. I just felt like I shouldn't have gone through all that shit. This minecart level can eat my whole ass and throw it back up. Fuck you! Oh, oh, ah, uh, I... I need my medicine. Hold up here. Uh, fuck. I got one more to show you, and I'm only going to show you a little bit because PS2 emulation's kind of iffy. You need a pretty hot PC, and my laptop from 2016 with a 1050 doesn't quite cut it. Scooby-Doo First Frights was a tie-in game with Scooby-Doo The Mystery Begins, along with another game called Spooky Swamp. And god, those 3D models are from hell. Speaking of weird styles, have y'all ever seen that Family Guy looking Scooby-Doo show? What was up with that? The main reason I wanted to show you what little I can of it is because this is a Scooby-Doo beat-em-up game. It's Devil May Scoob! 
And I think that's going to do it for the Scooby-Doo games. There's several more. In fact, I recorded more, but I can only put so many. So that's our show for today, but I've got a few announcements to make. I've done some updating to the Patreon. To begin with, the only pledge tier I had was $5, and that gets you my Discord, a shout-out, and early access. You see the videos before anybody else. However, if you don't need all that extra stuff and just want to support me or can't afford $5 a month, I am now announcing a $1 tier. That's right one damn dollar one damn dollar and you still get your name at the end of the video how's that sound not only that i've got a patreon goal up so now there's actually incentive to sign up if we can make it to $200, boys, I will make two videos a month instead of one. Y'all seem to love the idea of more than one video from me a month, so let's work together to make that a thing. As for me, I will see y'all next month with another episode. See y'all later. <laughs>